Hello again, I am Blunty, rescuing today's content plan. I, I've been trying for hours today, just, 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 just to get, get something written, get something produced, get something in the pipeline video-wise, but my back is still feeling all messed up because I, I live-streamed on New Year's Eve and I stood up for almost all of the 10 hours of that stream, which was not a smart idea because my I've got a chronic back thing anyway, but I was full of booze, which was helping masking that, and my back has not quite forgiven me for that error of judgment yet. And I just, I'm feeling a bit muddy-headed today anyway, so it's hard to concentrate and get anything done. So, you know, I was just watching a bunch of YouTube videos and, and sort of making some notes and some stuff I want to get done, and uh, I give up, I give up. I just, I just can't do anything today. I'm just going to watch some old episodes of South Park and I'm going to play some Monster Hunter Rise and I'm just going to chill for us today and, and forgive myself for being completely unproductive. Because we do, you just have to forgive yourself for taking the day off sometimes. Which, if you start digging into that, is a really messed up thing to, to feel. Capitalism. Yay! But just as I was like literally tweeting what I've just communicated to you there, that, you know, oh, I give up for the day. Um, someone messaged me and said, well, you've done a few videos recently about th issues that have bounced off of or touched on or mentioned things like transphobia. And you've mentioned JK Rowling a couple of times, one of the biggest, you know, celebrities uh, who's, who's, who's involved in the whole transphobia argument kind of dealy thing. And they said, well, have you, have you watched the reunion special yet? Cause there was just a, uh, Harry Potter reunion special, 20 years. Uh, from the from the first film, I suppose, uh, where a bunch of the stars and, and people involved in the film got together and reminisced and stuff. I haven't watched it yet. Uh, it's probably quite entertaining because, well, a lot of the people uh, surely are very entertaining people being professional entertainers and probably have some very lovely stories to tell. Um, and there was a whole thing about how J.K. Rowling, the, the person who wrote the original books and, and, you know, was responsible for that universe existing, wasn't in it. Well, she was, apparently, 10 times, but in file footage of old interviews and stuff. Um, and they were like, oh, they, did, they, didn't, they didn't want her in the special because she's problematic or, and the, the wokeisms and all that kind of garbage. I'm sure you're aware of it. If you're aware of Harry Potter stuff at all, I'm sure you're already aware of the arguments going on. And then it turned out that I saw in a tweet yesterday that apparently she was invited to come do the thing, but if she was invited and she wasn't there, she probably said no. So I don't know what to talk about that. And anyway, so the person mentioned me said, oh, I haven't heard you talk about this. And that's mainly because I don't care that much about Harry Potter. I like the Harry Potter films. They're entertaining. I'm looking forward to uh, the new Harry Potter game that's coming out. I nearly said next year. It's this year now, isn't it? Um, and I've made a video about how I feel about that, you know, supporting JK Rowling and really not liking what she says about certain political topics and stuff. And I don't want to put any money in her pocket because of that, because of my own morality and whether or not, you know, that means I don't get to play the game and things like that. I'll link to the video down below. It's just waffling about that sort of issue of morality versus... You know, how far do you push it? How far do you punish other people for what she says? Because, you know, she's not she's not making the game. She's getting money from the game, licensing and whatnot, surely. But she's not the one responsible for it. And, eh, is it enough of an issue? Oh, watch the other video. Um, but, you know, outside of that, I, I haven't even watched the special yet. So I've got no reference point for how often she's mentioned, how she's talked about, if at all, or any of that. And frankly, I don't care enough to go out of my way to watch it immediately and then make a whole video about it. So, ugh. but at the exact same time that that message came in, I was watching a video that it was just, it popped up in my recommendations and it was a clip from Michael Rosenbaum's podcast inside of you. For those who don't know, Michael Rosenbaum, best known for at least people my age as the guy who played Lex Luthor in Smallville, the uh, 10 year long running, uh, pre-Superman pre sort of prequel kind of deal um, which is a show I recently rewatched, and it holds up pretty well it's a bit wibbly in the beginning first season season and a half is a bit more <laughs> cheesy but then they find their feet and it actually tells some really interesting stories in some really interesting way the performances the writing the direction are all very interesting and then they kind of screwed Michael over at the end of it with the whole Lex Luthor thing and because I, there's a whole another story there and it's probably in one of his podcasts I'll let him tell the story for yourself if you're willing to dig that out but it got a bit weird with Lex in the end but anyway, Michael, on his podcast, was interviewing James Masters, because part of his podcast is interviewing a lot of people who are on that type of uh, show. You know, he interviews a lot of actors, a lot of people who was working on Smallville or the other shows he was on or related shows and other people who've played Lex Luthor, Clancy Brown, he interviewed once and things like that. Um, and it's, it reflects a lot on mental health stuff. It's a good podcast. If you haven't heard of it, you should check it out. 
But he was interviewing James Masters, and the clip I was watching was uh, talking about um, a Buffy reunion. Would, it, would, would James want to be part of that uh, if, it was, if it was a thing? Um, and so I quickly checked the date while that was happening, and it turns out that, yeah, actually, there is an anniversary, a significant anniversary for Buffy coming up, uh, in a few months, in fact. So probably not time for a whole production to get up and running, but unless they've been doing it in secret. Uh, but Buffy's first episode is about to turn 25 years old. So if you're going to do a reunion, you'd think it would already be in the, in the works by now. But when asked about the reunion, James uh, started to say, well, if Joss wasn't... Um, and then he sort of... You saw the, the, the wheels turn and clock and... and, and to get a... Would you do a, a Buffy uh, reunion if they did something? Or a Buffy yeah, movie? Yeah, you know, if, if Joss... Yes, if... <sighs> I, I I have I have I have reticence about it, Mike. And then he sort of changed track a little bit, and he said, "Well, you know, it will be a bit weird if we did a reunion special." And I think it was more thinking of a fictional reunion special, like you know, Buffy twenty five years years later, instead of what they did with the Harry Potter thing, where the cast just got together and reminisced. Um, because then he started talking about, "Oh, it'd be a bit weird because you know I've aged, and Spike is a vampire; he's not supposed to age, and obviously." Buffy will have aged as well. And, uh, the, and you know, he started talking about that sort of stuff. Oh, it, it, it wouldn't work. And then uh, Michael Rosenman was like, oh, well, they, you can put makeup on you. They can de-age you. And the clip and the comment sort of went nowhere. But before he caught himself talking about Joss, you could tell he was thinking about going on the tangent that uh, I'm sure we all know about by now. But Josh Whedon himself has not the same problematic issue as J.K., but a completely different set of problematic things where Joss has for years upon years upon years now had many stories coming up from people who've worked with him who say he's a prick. And not just a prick, but a misogynist prick. A misogynist prick who, who abuses his power over people. And uh, although I don't think anything is legitimately being said one way or the other, but very probably tried to molest some people, maybe. Uh, there was there was there was one star Michelle uh, Tr Trashenberg Berg, Berg. she's got a really long last name and I always get it wrong Trashenberg Michelle Trashenberg but you know she she's told a story a few times and she doesn't obviously doesn't like talking about this but people ask her about it and she says well this I'm gonna say this and nothing more I'm done don't want to talk about it anymore just want to concentrate and raise in my family but she's told a story before about how she wasn't allowed to be alone with Joss. Like nobody would let her be alone in the room with him. It was a rule on set, apparently. He was never, ever, ever to be left alone with this young girl. And of course, uh, Charisma Carpenter and 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 Amber Benson and you know all of the a lot of the Buffy stars have all talked about this problematic stuff and Angel too. Um, and then you've got years and years later where people like Ray Fisher and Gal Gadot from the from the DC movies and things have all talked about how issue filled his attitude generally is when it comes to his abuse of power and the way he treats people the way his attitude towards women and and people who he feels is uh, beneath him and all that sort of stuff and you know when it comes to buffy and angel and dollhouse and firefly and if you've never seen dollhouse very underrated by the way people always mention buffy and, and firefly but dollhouse is a good show too despite joss's involvement i suppose but much like Harry Potter fans, these are things I love that Joss Whedon is directly responsible for. Um, and every time I rewatch them these days, you think about the stories about Joss and you go, is it, is it okay for me to still enjoy these things? And this is another thing I touched on uh, in a recent video, I'll link it below there, when uh, Will Whedon was talking about this. Uh, I think it was in relation to Joss and Buffy directly, actually. And Will Whedon was like, it was a kind of a death of the author argument. If these shows meant something to you, then they can still mean something to you. Um, and rewatching the DVDs doesn't put any extra money in Joss's pocket, all that, all that kind of stuff. Again, I'll link the video on the down below if you like for that. But I guess I feel the same way about a Buffy reunion as, I w as, as Harry Potter fans do the Harry Potter stuff, or indeed the stars more specifically, like James uh, Masters, who was also in Smallville, by the way, if you didn't know that played Brainiac, did it really well too. But I would lay odds that possibly the reason that a Buffy reunion special has never happened, probably never will happen, and if it did, it probably will be done without Joss, 
is probably for a similar reason that JK was, uh, you know, not missed, I suppose, by most people or many people at least, uh, judging by the conversations I've had, I've seen around this. You know, some people are shaking their fist and oh, wokeism's a can. She's been cancelled. She's not been cancelled, you fucker. She's still making bajillions of dollars, and nobody's stopping her from saying anything she, she's saying. It's people are allowed, are allowed, you know, people are allowed to not agree with her and, and tell her that they don't agree with her. That's not being cancelled. That's being held responsible for the things that you say in public. Anyway, waffled for longer than I intended to in this video. I'll probably just put it up unedited. There's probably not much after to chop out of here. How, how long have we gone? I've been recording for 11 minutes, 35 seconds. Did I, did I edit anything out? You tell me. And you tell me how you feel about if they did a Angel or Buffy or Dollhouse or Firefly reunion special without Joss. You think that was fair? You think anyone who worked with him, who had these issues with him, would come to a reunion special if he was involved? Because I don't think they would. I've got a final feeling Mr. Masters wouldn't, considering how he reacted to that question uh, on the podcast. Anyway, thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and we'll catch you next time.